セルサ気をつけろ何かが世界に何かが起きようとしているさあそんな心配はいいから寄り道しないで帰るのよ The Holy Trinity The destroyer of worlds or altogether The Four Horsemen of the Armageddon. Bayonetta 3's purple figure. We've said it could be Eggman. Some say it's Antonio, and we've also said it could be Cheshire. But what we do know is that it's extremely likely that the narrative of the enemies in the teaser could be a recurring sleeper agent like John and Young Boulder. The apocalyptic turmoil that we are going to face in Bayonetta 3 could be because we failed to see the bigger picture against a seer. <laughs> He was warning us of a threat that even he himself, with the eyes of the world, could not stop. Maybe that's true. Maybe not. But could there be another magic user that has been hiding all this time? The blood moon in the Bayonetta 3 teaser trailer, was that hinting something else? Was Platinum Games telling us to look deeper? Or maybe even literally? Yeah, li yeah. Li literally? Literally, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. An eclipse coming down for the apocalypse. Not literally a bloody moon, but maybe a person. Just to warn you guys, this is slightly different to my top seven picks video and could have potential spoilers for Bayonetta 3. You have been warned. Now, how I came to this conclusion of this secret magic user was merely through the political threat logic that I will explain through these three examples. When Itachi died in Naruto Shippuden, Pain was able to destroy Konoha. If you notice, no one really obliterated Konoha while Itachi was in the Akatsuki. When All Might lost his power, new villains started popping out. When Stark was gone, that's when all the haters started to come out out of the shadows with their technology. Now hear me out, Bayonetta 3 could finally introduce the third human magic user, an Eclipsian mage. An adapted mix of both Umbran and Lumen arts designed to slay the Forbidden Child. I speculate that there will be another book left by Antonio or a page that has been ripped out by Antonio that really talks about who this Eclipsian mage really is. This is what the book or the ripped out page would say. Eclipsian arts is the amalgamation of both Umbran and Lumen arts. It is believed that an adopted human child was taught this magic. This happened somewhere in Vigrid, after the witch hunts, where a dying Lumen sage and an Umbran witch worked together. A loophole to the forbidden child policy inscribed in the stones of both the clans of the Umbran witches and Lumen sages. A secret mission to slay the forbidden child. Due to fate, the Umbran witch and the Lumen sage named their adoptive child the Force of Bayonetta. You're not the only forbidden child. In Bayonetta 3, the Eclipsian mage named Ludovicus aims to defeat the forbidden witch Bayonetta. Why the name Ludovicus? Well, here's why. Bayonetta was coined from the term bayonet, a primary melee weapon used in World War I. Another crucial weapon from the war was the Lewis machine gun, where Lewis was derived from the post-classical Latin name Ludovicus. Also, both of them have the same amount of syllables, you know, Bayonetta and Ludovicus. Just like how Bayonetta was originally named Cereza, Ludovicus would have been named Louis when he was a child. Essentially, and this is where it gets really, really exciting, I love this part, we're going to see a fight, a recurring fight, between the Forbidden Child and whom I'd like to call the Foreordained Child. Or the Oreo Child, because, you know, there's light and dark in the cookie, so... But yeah, anyways, that recurring fight would be epic. It also fits the narrative of the sleeper agent like John and Young Balda. We would finally understand who that person fully is on the third fight with them. Now, towards the last chapters of Bayonetta 3, Ludovicus and Bayonetta would have a mutual agreement to take down Lilith. A bayonet and a Lewis machine gun separated were deadly enough, but dual wielding them against the central powers of the world now that is a sight to see. Now if you look at it, it's Bayonetta and Ludovicus against the central eyes of the world. While Bayonetta would be fighting Eggman in the first initial and mid chapters, where would John and our beloved loved characters would be? John would be set to take down the first Umbran Witch Queen, Umbran Witch Ava. The first witch versus 
The Last Witch, where we finally get to play as John in some chapters throughout Bayonetta 3, exploring her origins and potential parents. Umbrin Witch Ava would possibly have enough strong magic to put John into a genjutsu, either through time travel or even just an illusion like we see her past in some sort of VR world. Now, throughout their fight, this is what they're going to say. I'm going to put some manga inserts and I hope you enjoy. Now, how about Ade? Who is he going to fight? I would have to put him against Radan, the Infinite One. The Infinite One. Boy, you've grown so much, but far from infinite. So you've become a devil in Angel's clothing. Don't forget who taught you that fist, Broden. Could you imagine the cool, epic, shonen conversation of this fight where we finally get to play as Radon for a few chapters? The Eternal One versus the Infinite One. And finally, we have our last theater of war. We have Bayonetta and Ludovicus versus Lilith. And also, it would be really dark, yet an epic showcase if Lilith possessed Little Cereza's grown-up body. Remember, both of them were called Little One by a motherly figure. Are you sick, Little One? Therefore, I would call this epic conclusion of a fight, a grand finale, The Forbidden Children versus The First Memories of Little Ones. Sarasa, shall we illustrate? <laughs> this is the second Armageddon. If only there was an anime to all of this. <laughs> I'm Rakan, and thank you so much for 50 grand episodes of Bayonetta 3 theories. Happy theorizing. Action game, you know, 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 you know,